Hey, what's going on, YouTube? It's your boy D. Lloyd back with episode seven of our Marshall University Dynasty, and I just want to just tell y'all straight from the beginning, I still have not signed a recruit. Um, this is going on longer than I have expected. Um, I did make a couple changes to the recruiting board, nothing drastic, but um, I went ahead and just removed a couple people who weren't interested at all or I was dropping drastically every week I did go ahead and add three new players one is Brad Spicer he is a um a 79 overall athlete after I fully scouted him um he has 95 speed which really impressed me nobody offered him a scholarship so I figured hey why not go ahead and jump on him the second one is Ryan Fuller he is also an athlete 78 overall out of Maryland uh, he looks like he could do just about a little bit of everything. Also, Alan, Alan Denman, who's the 76 overall quarterback. Um, I just want to bring in another quarterback because Cato has been struggling quite a bit. Uh, straight to this, go into this game. We're playing FAU Owls, the Florida Atlantic Owls. Um, this is game two of our Conference USA conference games. Um, last week we did beat University of Texas San Antonio 14-6 to in a very defensive game that we barely won and we squoked that game out. Um, here we go right into this, getting right into the game. First play from scrimmage we handed off to Kevin Grooms who had a, a pretty off week last week in terms of yardage only getting 18 yards. He gets dropped for a loss. Now 34. Cato drops back and he gets brought down for a 6 yard sack. And that is not how you want to start off a game, but a quick three and out. FAU does get the ball. And they, Curtis, and he gets sacked. Stephen Curtis, loss of four yards on their first play. Now third and 11. We're trying to get them to go three and out just as we did. And they get him with the slip screen. And Jonathan Wallace gets pushed out of bounds. So they do punt the ball from fourth and nine. Here comes the punt. And fielding it is Daryl Roberts, but he decides not to return it. And look at this bounce, a great bounce. And they down us at the one-yard line. That is not good field position, especially after our first possession ended. Here we go. Next play, we're just trying to get out of our own end zone. We hand it off to Kevin Grooms, and he goes up. He cuts up, gets about four yards on the run, which will be second to six. We go with a read option, and Rakeem Cato finds a little bit of room, and he slides to get down. No more fumbling problems. I learned my lesson after the last couple weeks. Cato's been a turnover machine, so we had to go ahead and get down. This play, we hand it off to Kevin Grooms, and he gets nine yards to make it second to one. We go with the speed option. He pitches it to Remy Watson. He gets the first down after taking the hard hit for now second to five for Marshall. Cato drives back. He throws it to Angelo Gene Lewis, and he goes down. He does get hurt, so he wouldn't miss the rest of the first half. He, um, he had a strained back, so he does come back. However, I was a little bit nervous anytime I see one of my main guys get hurt. This right here scared me to the tip pass. It's just barely out of reach. Now third and ten. We're trying to keep the drive alive. Cato drives back, and he finds Demetrius Evans on the sideline for the first down. Now second and six, we hand it off to Remy Watson, and he squeezes through for a first down, which will set up a first and goal for the Thunder and Herd. The very next play, we go read option. We give it to Kevin Grooms, and what does he do? Nothing else but get inside the end zone for his 10th rushing touchdown of the season. It looks good for him to get back into the end zone after a pretty bad week last week. This right here is a terrible throw, and it is almost picked off, but it is dropped by Stephon Houston. Never throw the ball across your, your body like that. That was a terrible throw. It's right here on the screen, and it's a great block, and Jonathan Wallace has room to run, but he gets brought down at about the 46-yard line off a great screen pass. This right here is the receiver screen, and that goes in nowhere as William Dukes does not get a yard on that play. They go right here for a slip screen again. They throw to Wallace, and he gets the first down for the Owls. Now second and six. They throw it to William Dukes again, and he gets another first down. Now in the red zone. FAU, they drop back. He has plenty of time. He throws it, and it is caught out of bounds. Almost a touchdown, and the Thunder and her catch a break on that one. This right now is third and ten. Curtis is dropping back, and he finds an open st Stoshock, I believe that was his name. Couldn't really pronounce that, but he was wide open for a touchdown, which ties the game at 7. 
The pursuing kickoff is kicked to Daryl Roberts, our return man. And he finds a little bit of room to run. He sees the gap and he's going to explode through the gap. But he gets brought down at around the 40 yard line after he fought for some yardage. <laughs> there they go with the triple option. He pitches it to Remy Watson and he's going to going to lose four yards on the pitch they shut that down now second to 14 Rakeem Cato he's dropping back he has a little bit of time but he does not get rid of the ball and he gets sacked <laughs> loss of seven on the play now that's third and 11 Cato he's going to drop he's going to look he's going to try to dump it off to Kevin Grooms but that is no go almost intercepted so we got away with one there after the punt, here comes FAU, and they find a wide open Cunningham, and he goes down to about the 43-yard line. Now first and 10. What are they going to do? They go play action. He rolls out, and he's going to run with it, and he just trucks the defender, and he keeps on going. What a run by Stephen Curtis. He just trucked one of my defenders as a quarterback. Just kept on going. This one, they handed it off to the running back, Fortner, and he loses three yards, which causes a third and eight. Here comes FAU trying to convert on third down, and he gets tackled just short. Fourth and four, which will force a field goal attempt for FAU, and the kick is up, and that is right down the middle. FAU will take a 10-7 lead. On the next possession, we try a read option, and that gets stopped. They took away both ops on that one, so we couldn't go anywhere. Now second to 14, we throw it deep, and it is picked off. Kato with his first interception of the day. That's something that you guys have all probably getting really familiar with. That's just turning the ball over with picks. Um, most of it is my fault, but also, again, Kato, you can't, you can't force that in that situation, too. Now third and two for FAU. They're trying to get the first down, and Curtis once again just plows his way through for a first down. Third and three. They're trying to convert another one, but this time he does not break a tackle, and he gets brought down after the punt. Here comes Marshall, and they complete it to Demetrius Evans for a gain of 12 on the play. We're trying to get something going before halftime, but he gets sacked right here. And that is not a good look as Cato is on his back again. Here we go, third and 14. We're trying to get something happening. We throw the ball to Woodrum, and Joe Woodrum drops the football. And that will force the Thunder and her to punt the ball to FAU Owls. First and 10, they go ahead and dump it off for a nine yard gain. 16 seconds left. They're trying to get something before halftime. They throw the ball deep, and it is caught by Williams Dukes, and he is in the end zone for a touchdown as he just ran straight by my safety and my cornerback in the cover four defense. And that is not what we wanted. That will take the Florida Atlantic Owls halftime with a 17-7 to lead. All right, we, had, we outdid them a time of possession, but... They are just out doing this in every stat besides that, especially yardage-wise. 16 yards rushing, is that is terrible, especially for Marshall, who do pride themselves on rushing with Kevin Grooms and Rakeem Cato from time to time on option plays. Um, that is something that they definitely need to turn around in the second half if they have any chance of winning. And here comes FAU's first possession of the second half. Stephen Curtis does keeps it for a two-yard gain. Now third and eight. They're trying to get a first down. They throw the ball deep, and Stoshock gets the ball again. He breaks the tackle, and he is going to run, but he gets brought down at about the six-yard line. Second to goal now for FAU. They're trying to get in the end zone, and he gets brought down at about the two-yard line. Third and goal. Marshall's trying to get a stop, and they do stop him and force them to make a field goal attempt. And right there is right up the middle, of course. Get three yards. I mean, three points. We need that. We ain't need them coming in the second half getting a touchdown. This is our next possession, the very next play. We go ahead and we pitch it out to Kevin Groves, and he has room to run. He is going to go down to the 30, the 20, the 10, 5, and he gets brought down at about the two-yard line. The very next play, we give the ball to Remy Watson, and he just runs in the end zone easily. And that goes ahead and... Cuts the lead down to 14 to 20. Here comes your FAU Owls, and here comes Stephon Curtis again, and he gets brought down one yard short, which will cause the third and one. 
and they go for another read option again and this time it is aided up by your Marshall defense and does force the FAU to punt the ball and here comes the next possession here comes the rollout by Kato he's going to throw it deep and it is completed by Tangelo Gene Lewis he is back after the injury he came back at halftime and he comes out making a play that was a great throw too by Rakeem Cato. Right here, he just cannot get a foot in bounds, Demetrius Evans. So, does force a third and eight. And Rakeem Cato drops back and he gets sacked. Once again, Cato was on his back and that does force us to attempt a 49 yard field goal and that does get in there. That is his longest kick of the season. Right here is a nice, nice little slant route to Williams Duke so he gets the first down. Curtis, he gets the ball. He goes for the read option. He runs up and he gets a gain of about 12 yards on the run. Now Marshall territory, FAU. They have the ball. They're trying to make something happen on third and eight. They go ahead and they throw the ball to Fortner, but he gets stopped about two yards short, which will cause a fourth and two and forces FAU to punt the ball on the pursuing on possession. Here comes Marshall, and once again, Cato is just eaten up as he gets sacked again he cannot stay off his back this game now second 11 Cato's getting ahead as he throws but Angelo Jean Lewis does come down with a catch which forces a third and one and the Kevin Grooms takes the ball to the middle for about four yards which will get a first down for Marshall right now the third as the third quarter is ended we need something to go our way Kevin Grooms gets that seven yard run so we do have a little bit of momentum coming into the fourth quarter we're trying to capitalize right here on third down and we do not get it and that forces the fourth and one for Marshall it's trying to keep that momentum going Marshall does go for the fake punt and it is converted as Stephon Grace does capitalize on the fake punt get the five yard gain and that keeps the drive alive for Marshall now third and ten they're trying to stay on the field once again and Joe Woodrum catches the ball for 16 yards so we are looking pretty good trying to get down and get some type of points. Here comes Rakeem Cato and this is his longest run so far of the day as he breaks it for about a good 15 yards for a first down. We go right back to it with a triple option. This time he pitches it to Remy Watson and he gets the first down. So first and 10 at about the 11 yard line for the Thunder and Herb. We're trying to capitalize, get a touchdown, preferably they give it to Kevin Grooms and he goes down to about the two yard line. So now second and two, they give it to Kevin Grooms again and he is in there for his second touchdown of the day, which will be his 11 touchdown on the season. Marshall does come back and they take a 24 to 20 lead. FAU with three minutes left, they're trying to get back on the scoring board and he just trucks my defender I don't know if y'all seen that or not but he just <laughs> stepped on him right in the chest kept him moving here we go right now first and ten and Williams Dukes once again gets a 13 yard gain and they are just driving right now I'm getting a little a little nervous right here they do run the counter and that does not go anywhere now third and nine we're trying to get off the field after they come back with the slip screen and he goes nowhere as the safety was all over that forces them to punt the ball Marshall was just trying to get some points on the board make it a little bit harder for FAU to come back or just put it out of reach Angela Jean Lewis comes with his fourth catch right there now first and ten right after the catch Cato he throws the ball to the outside and it is intercepted by Cravon LeBlanc and he is down to the, about the 46 yard line and FAU has new hope a minute and 51 seconds left down by four they do have the ball so here comes Stephon Curtis he has all the time in the world and he is going to launch it deep into the end zone but it is picked off by Marshall and I do stay in the end zone to take the knee so at this point all we need is a first down to go ahead and run the clock out first and go that I'm mean, a first down that does get stuffed up but not after a four yard game by Kevin Grooms they do use their one of their timeouts we come back with the next play, Kevin to Kevin Grooms, and he finds an opening, and he is going to go. He is running all the way down the field, and nobody is going to catch him. Kevin Grooms is gone for a touchdown, 76-yard run. That is his longest run in about three weeks. He hasn't had a run like that in a while, and that almost seals the deal, 31-20. to Now FAU needs a miracle. As they're trying to drive down the field, they go ahead and dump it off to Jonathan Wallace, and he is down but he does get out of bounds 
on the play. Now fourth and seven. This is it. They need this first down. They're going to throw the ball on the out route to Cunningham, and he gets it at about the 45. So now 40 seconds left on the clock. Stephon Curtis, he's dropping. He rolled out. He has plenty of time. He's going to throw it back across the field to Cunningham, and he is down at about the 26-yard line. Here they come again, second to 15. He has all the time in the world again. He's going to complete the ball down to about the four-yard line. 15 seconds left. They're trying to hurry up and get this quick touchdown. They're going to need an onside kick if they do convert the touchdown. But no, it is picked off by Dale Roberts. And that is going to seal the game for your Marshall Thunder and her. And we are going to come out of here with the 31 to 20 lead and approve our record to 4 and 2 on the season, 2 and 0 in conference USA. Kevin Grooms is going to win player of the game finishing with 7 17 carries, 198 yards and 3 touchdowns, which is one of his best best performances as of late. We do take on Middle Tennessee State in our next game, which is another Conference USA opponent. They are 2 and 4 on the season, so remember to comment, like or subscribe. I um, mean, stay tuned for our next week's episode. Peace.